what are the best resources to a step two and score very high in 2026 and you will be shocked by how many few resources i recommend if you're new here my name is malki Assad. i've tutored hundreds of students over the last five years and in this video i'm going to share with you the lessons we learned me and my tutors tutoring these hundreds of students and seeing the results and what worked for most of them. Before I mention these specific resources that you need to study to score to 60 to 70 plus, I want to explain to you the reasons why we came to this conclusion. Because it's going to be very important for you when you're making that decision on what resources to pick. Especially with multiple other YouTubers, influencers telling you to study a huge amount of resources, which is opposite of what I'm going to tell you. What we found is that some students study so many resources and end up scoring 250 plus, 260 plus, and some students study a resource or two and they still score the same 260 plus 270 plus so by looking at the outcome we saw that those people who scored high although some of them studied for a year or more studied two three question banks a million assessments and multiple books the majority of those who scored high did not study that much and that got us thinking of the idea of path of least resistance the easiest way to get to your goal 260 plus 270 plus if multiple students not some exception if multiple students were able to score high with few resources that means you don't need these other extra resources if you study extra resources fine you're not gonna score less but it's just gonna take you more time so why hold your ear like that when you can just hold it like this so studying more resources is not gonna hurt your score it's just gonna cost you time which is a very expensive commodity especially for doctors who have very high salaries and stress so just keep Keep that in mind when you're watching this video and thinking about the resources I'm gonna recommend. And you will see that I also have some checkpoints that you can assess as you're going through this journey. In my opinion, the only resource you need is a question bank, but you might need some adjuncts to help you understand that question bank. So let's start by talking about the question bank and then we'll go over these adjuncts. There are multiple question banks available for step two. In my opinion, the most relevant for the exam, the one that will probably help you the most achieve your 260 plus, your 270 plus, is you all. I think it's a very solid question bank and it has what you need to score high on the exam. But an important key in studying U World is studying it right. Because I've seen students who study U World and 20 other students who study U World and this group would score 240 and this group would score 270. Why? Because they didn't study it right. And I have a detailed video on how to study U World, detailed blog on how to study U World or a question bank in general. But reading the questions, reading the explanation is not gonna cut it for you. So if you're able to just master your world, master the explanations in there, master doing it in a timed mode so you're preparing for the exam every day and retaining that information that is in the explanations and the question, then you're good. But most students cannot just study question bank on its own. The most resistance we see is, well, I don't want to start studying with questions. I want to study a book because especially international students, they've always been used to the idea of studying for multiple books. They get a question exactly from that book or they get asked to write a whole paragraph about the topic, which is totally different than the American system. System. The American system is testing concepts, testing your understanding. So even if you study U World, even if you study Kaplan, even if you study Master the Board or any book you think of, you're not gonna get the exact question from these books. You're gonna get the same concepts or similar concepts, and you'll also get questions from outside these resources. So again, some students are just resistant to the idea of starting with a question bank. They don't wanna have low score on the block. But remember, U World or any question bank in the beginning is for learning. It's not for assessment. So I don't care really how much you score and what percentage you get right or wrong just solve it as a question you know one block at a time and then study these concepts from the explanation and you will see your percentage will rise but again even if like you're half through the question bank I don't really care about your percentage. I care about what you're learning from that question bank. You world or Ambos or any question bank you're using. But since a lot of people had this problem, we created a solution for them. Because as I mentioned, most people want something, you know, something before they go and jump into a question bank. But I'm not a fan of spending months studying books. That's why we created a seven day bootcamp for step two. Literally just seven days. Focus on the high yield concepts. It's live with live tutors, not AI tutors, actual tutors. who are gonna spend eight to nine hours a day with you for seven days straight every single day and explain the high yield concepts of every subject on the step two CK exam. So that could be your introductory course before you start studying the question bank. You or Ambos. Now you know what is high yield. You have a quick broad overview of the high yield topics of every subject on step two in seven days only. And then you can dive into to the question bank. You can use that resource as well as a review tool at the end of your preparation. And this course is recorded. So if you want to attend the course and then watch maybe the uh, internal medicine GI part and then go and solve these questions from you all, you can do that as well. So this second resource I recommend, which is the seven day live step two bootcamp from the Match Guy, is not mandatory. But if you want something to help you 
understand the question bank, it's probably a nice segue into the question bank. And some people still request some kind of book, some kind of material. And that's why we also created the Match Guy High Yield Files for Step 2, which is a list of high yield topics that are tested on the exam. And you can get these files fully for free by clicking the link in the card above or the link in the description below. And the course goes to explain these concepts to you. Again, these high yield files are also not a mandatory resource, but it could be a nice segue into your preparation for the question bank. And you can see that these two extra adjustments I recommend it in addition to your world or the question bank that you want to study take very little time to study because I don't want you spending months trying to go through a book and that book doesn't really relate to the exam you will see a common factor between these two things the high yield files from the match guy and the step two the live seven day boot camp they don't take much time the max they're gonna take is seven days which is the length of the course and trust me it will save you a lot of time. And an amazing thing about the course, because I understand it might be a financial commitment for you, we made it risk-free, which means if you sign up, pay money, and you don't like it, after the first session, you can get your money back. And we do live sessions every month, and you will get access to these recordings as well. So in my opinion, these three resources, if you study them well, should be enough for you to score 260 plus, 270 plus on your exam. But I always get these questions from people, I need to study more, it's not working for me. I have an easy way to assess that. Take an MBME exam, take a self-assessment, and see where you stand. If you're scoring going to 65 to 70 on your MBME exam, you don't need much more studying, just go take the exam. But make sure you're getting similar score on multiple MBME exams. If you're scoring very low after you go through these resources, you have to assess. Is my problem that I did not study these resources well? I did not study your world explanations well? I did not take good notes? I did not study it in the right way? Or I studied everything perfectly? I remember every single piece of information on your world and I need an additional resource. And usually it's never the case like that. Usually it's somebody who did not study study UWorld well. To this day, I have not seen a single instance of an applicant who studied UWorld perfectly. They know every single piece of the information. They took great notes. And if I asked them about any question on the whole question bank, they would answer me and they could not score 250 plus on their MBME exams. I've not seen that. It's always the case this resource was not studied well. And that doesn't mean you just have to redo UWorld over and over again. The teaching style of UWorld might not fit for you. Ambos might be a better fit. Or you might need tutoring or more video explanations. So you have to really assess your problem. It's like a medicine. If you don't know what the reason for the patient presentation, you don't know what to give them for treatment. So you need to see what is the cause of this problem. Why are you scoring on the MBMEs before you try to add additional resources? Because what I've seen people do, they study UWorld or a question bank, they don't score high on this assessment, and they just start adding additional resources without solving the core problem, which is the learning style, the learning techniques. And you're going to go and study a second question bank and a third question bank with the same mistakes that you've done for the first one, and your score is not going to increase. So just please keep these things in mind when you're picking your resources. So now if you studied these resources well and you want to add additional resources, let's talk about some additional resources you should consider. Ambos is another great question bank. I've seen some people use it for certain sections. So let's say quality improvement, biostat, ethics as maybe an additional uh, layer of questions, additional layer of learning. But if you're scoring high on like cardiology, respiratory system, GI, don't just repeat the whole Ambos. takes time that most students don't have. So you can use it to supplement certain weak areas in your study. CMS forms, the same applies here. Use them to strengthen weak areas in your studying. Don't just do all of them just for the sake of doing them. Self-assessment exams, I'm not going to talk about them much here because in my opinion, self-assessment exams are not a study resource. They're more like assessment resource, but be careful that you should study the reasons why these answers are right or wrong because these are written by usually the USMLE test authors. So it's very helpful to understand the rationale and the logic behind these questions. But you should definitely do multiple MBMEs and you will self-assessment. And the magic guy is actually building a self-assessment for you as well by the time this video is published or a few weeks after that the self-assessment will probably be public for you and you will find the link for that in the description of this video it will be available fully for free so that could be an additional layer to test yourself if you run out of mbmes and you want self-assessments books i'm not a huge fan of books especially for step two things get updated so often and books can't keep up with that and the style of the step two exam does not fit books learning style so i don't recommend books if you like to study from a paper or a PDF, I highly recommend you focus on the Match Guy High Yield Files and the Match Guy course that can supplement your question bank learning. But your learning for the step two should be 90% from a question bank. Don't spend time going through books. And if you need help to explain certain topics, you have two resources that can help you with that. ChatGPT, so you can put the concept that you're having difficulty understanding and tell it to explain it to you. And if you have difficulty understanding a section of it, ask it to explain that portion to you. And you can look some YouTube videos. Now we have a whole YouTube channel 
dedicated to USMLE stuff. See if we have some explanation of that topic in there. Check our course. But you can use AI to significantly boost your understanding of certain topics. The second resource you can use to boost your learning and understanding of difficult concepts and difficulties you're having issues with is tutoring. You can have a tutor explain it to you. And that will probably be higher financial commitment, but it can save you a lot of time. Because I'm sure you can figure it out at the end after spending two, three hours trying to look for an answer for a topic. But if you can afford it, tutoring will save you a lot of time. And tutoring is also very crucial when it comes to building a plan, building a study schedule, uh, picking the right resources. I'm telling you the right resources now, but if you want to adjust these resources for your special needs, you can talk to a tutor who can guide you with that. At The Match Guy, because our main goal is to help you succeed in your exams and match into residency, we made the first session with our tutors fully for free. You literally have to pay nothing. You don't put a credit card, you don't pay anything. You literally just schedule a session with our tutors and check it out. If you like it, you can discuss with them taking whatever package you like. If you don't like it, you can either try another tutor or just not go with tutoring. And it's so easy to do that. Click on the link in the card above or the link in the description below. Schedule a session with our support team who can understand what step are you studying for, what are your goals, and they will connect you with the right fit for you with the tutor who has dealt with situations like yours and would be a good fit to help you ace your exam. So to summarize, make your preparation simple and easy. The core of your studying, 90% of your time should go to studying question bank. And I recommend you all as your main study resource. If you're having difficulty starting with the question bank, you can supplement that with the Match Guy 7 Day Live Bootcamp for step two, which will explain the high yield topics to you and the match guy free high yield files. If you're still having difficulties with certain topics, you can study those sections from AMBOSS and you can supplement your weak topics from the CMS as well. Self assessments slash MBMEs are a must regardless, and you can use them to assess your progress and whether you're ready for the exam. If you're still having issues understanding different topics, I highly recommend either using AI like ChatGPT or any other AI and or tutoring. I hope this video provided you some insights on how to ace step two in 2026. I know many tell you to study so many resources, but I like to make things simple for you because I understand the burden of adding more resources, which will take more time and cause more stress, which you already have so much of. If you like this video, you like the advice in this video, I would really appreciate it if you leave thumbs up in the comments below. Don't forget to grab the free high yield files from the match guy. And I wish you best of luck acing your step 2CK exam and scoring 260 plus and even 270 plus. Peace.